anual del premio Ernesto González, otorgado a aquellos empleados de NGH que demuestran la excelencia en los servicios a la comunidad latina. Hemos preparado un evento especial para que todos lo disfruten. Good morning and welcome to the annual celebration of the Ernesto González Award, given to those employees at NGH que, who demonstrate excellence in services and the Latino community. We have prepared this event for everyone's enjoyment. Mi nombre es Sandra Ardóñez, represento el Comité de Iniciativas Latinas y soy la administradora del programa del Centro para la Diversidad y la Inclusión. My name is Sandra Ardóñez and I represent the Committee for Latino Initiatives and I am the Program Manager at the Center for Diversity and Inclusion. Este evento es parte de la celebración del mes de la herencia latina, cuyo tema este año es Unidos, inclusión para una nación más fuerte. Este tema se demuestra cada día, ya que los latinos somos una de las comunidades más activas e influyentes de los Estados Unidos. Nuestras fuertes aportaciones a la economía y nuestra gran diversidad cultural, llena de, colores, de coloridas tradiciones, hacen que tengamos grandes motivos para estar orgullosos, especialmente hoy que celebramos a los empleados de NGAs que con su trabajo y esfuerzo proveen un excelente servicio a la comunidad latina en sus comunidades y en NGAs. This event is part of the celebration of the Latin Hispanic Heritage Month, whose theme, theme this year is United Inclusivity for a Stronger Nation. This theme is demonstrated every day because Latinos are one of the most active and influential communities in the United States. Our strong contributions to the economy and our great cultural diversity full of colorful traditions give us many reasons to be proud. And we are proud, especially today, that we celebrate the MGH employees who their work and effort provide excellent service to the Hispanic community in the communities and NGH. Los invito a disfrutar de esta ceremonia y ahora es un privilegio y honor para mí introducir al Dr. David Brown, presidente de NGH. I invite you to enjoy this ceremony and now it's my privilege and honor to introduce Dr. David Brown, president of NGH. Good morning. I'm David Brown, the president of Massachusetts General Hospital. It's a pleasure to be with you here today. We come together to, of course, celebrate this year's Ernesto Gonzalez Award, which will be given out later in the presentation, but also to recognize Hispanic Heritage Month and the countless contributions that Latinos have made in our hospital, in our neighborhoods, and throughout the nation. Many of our own staff have dedicated their lives to bettering the lives of others right here at MGH and across their communities. We are lucky to have these selfless individuals who never hesitate to reach out to help others, who embrace each other's differences, knowing that it will only make us stronger as a healthcare institution, and who help strengthen and improve the health and well being of our communities. One of these incredible individuals is, of course, Ernesto Gonzalez, whose name graces our annual award, recognizing an MGHer's outstanding contributions to the Hispanic community. Ernesto has been an integral part of the MGH for the past four decades and has paved the way for other Latinos to not only follow their dreams and achieve their goals, but also, and as importantly, to help others do the same. Another MGHer who embodies this dedication and commitment to others is someone that I have the privilege of introducing today, our keynote speaker, Dr. Margarita Alegria. As chief of the Disparities Research Unit in the Mongan Institute at MGH, Dr. Alegria runs cutting edge research projects to improve the care 
and well-being of our diverse patient populations with the goal of eliminating all healthcare disparities. She is also the Harry G. Leonard Jr. and Lucille F. Sear Leonard Endowed MGH Research Institute Chair and a professor in the Departments of Medicine and Psychiatry at Harvard Medical School. Thank you, Maggie, for all that you do for the equity and inclusion of all our patients. I look forward to your presentation. I would also like to thank everyone for attending today's celebration and for being part of this month's festivities. Thank you so much, Dr. Brown. That's, that was such a nice introduction. So I'm honored to initiate the celebrations for the MGH Ernesto Gonzalez Award. This award recognizes the importance of people that dedicate their heart and souls to providing the best possible care to Latino, Hispanic communities and patients. Our honorees today are MGA staff emblematic of Dr. Ernesto Gonzalez's legacy. He's an MGA dermatologist who for 40 plus years became the finest ambassador of our service to Latino Hispanic patients. His widespread reputation for attending Latino Hispanic patients with humility, empathy, and devotion became legendary. My brief remarks say how meaningful and significant this award is. I'm gonna use a few slides just to emphasize why it is so important in the world that we're living in. With understretched staff, busy healthcare, and lots of staff demands. This MGH staff might be invisible to many, but to Latino patients, they are the guardians of their health, the ones that care. Latino Hispanic patients come with great uncertainty to the medical appointments about how they will be treated, whether they will be understood, and if their complaints will be taken seriously. Their past experiences in other settings could have confronted them with racism, dismissiveness, and poor care. Immigrant Latinos, Hispanic, fear disclosure of who they are or of their information. They worry they might be interpreted as dumb or illiterate if their pronunciation is not right or if they do not recognize the terminology. Frightful to ask. I've been working with Latino populations for much of my life, being a Latina Hispanic myself. I wanna start showing you the terms Latino Hispanic that get used interchangeably, but they are not. Hispanic refers to language. Hispanics, if you and your ancestry come from a place that speaks Spanish. However, Latino, Latina refers to geography. It's really referring specifically to Latin America, to people from the Caribbean, to people from South America and Central America. And if you can see here in the slides, it includes some and excludes other, which is important. So when we talked about Latino, Latina, Hispanic, or from Latin America, we're talking about different people, but they're all the same, all feeling part of a cohesive culture together that binds them and bonds them into one. While the Latino population has been growing, they are likely to confront many obstacles in the healthcare system. Issues that have to do with racial ethnic discrimination, issues that have to do with intergenerational conflict between the first generation of parents and the cultural values of US born children and family members. They also deal with unfair treatment and negative neighborhood and social interactions. In a study by the Pew Foundation, a third of Latinos said that they have to speak up to get proper care. So you can see here, this is not an insignificant amount of people saying that they do have recently have to speak up to get proper care. Uh, and this is an area that we could do way better. Unfortunately, 20% of Latinos in the general population still say they have been discriminated against in their medical care. 
If they're women, it goes all the way to 25%. And a third of Latinos also have been identified as having limited English proficiency. Many of them without Spanish speakers to offer them care. So I think this is really challenges for our providers and the group here has addressed them beautifully. We even know that these problems are not only for clinical care, but are also for research. In medical research, 57 of Latinos consider medical research misconduct as a moderately big problem. 57% of Latinos compared to 48% of whites. So this is critical to acknowledge that in medical research, there's mistrust in Hispanic populations. Regrettably, many Latinos as a result do not get included in research and we miss out on being able to represent them in studies and learn how to help them with innovative treatments. I recently wrote about the importance of the inclusion of diverse older adults in clinical trials. This is a population that we need to treat better and to modify our recruitment and retention strategies to make sure that we include them in our trials. So the honorees here are people that can give us lessons following the footsteps of Dr. Ernesto Gonzalez. They're the people at MGH that are ambassadors of stellar care, trailblazers who want to center the voice of the patient in the decision-making of their care, that strive to make sure Latinos get their questions answered rather than jumping into EPIC, that go the extra mile to get them connected to other services besides the one that they provide. In their endless work as healing agents, they are identified by patients and coworkers as representatives of superior services to Latinos. Those are the people that remain in Latinos' mind even after they have left the hospital or the services. My sister came here when she suffered from Parkinson's disease, and I can testify that she was blessed to have MGA staff that trail in the footsteps of Dr. Ernesto Gonzalez, who wanted her to be the decision maker of her care, who treated her with dignity and dedication. We all need to learn from the awardees if we are to make better providers if we are to reduce disparities and if we are to create an inclusive environment for our Latino patients. My admiration and congratulations to the awardees. Now I'm gonna pass the baton to Jovita Thomas-Williams, Senior Vice President of Human Resources to continue with this exciting celebration. Thank you. Hello, it is my pleasure to be here today honoring MGH employees with the Ernesto Gonzalez Award for Outstanding Contributions to the Latino Community. Dr. Ernesto Gonzalez has been with MGH for more than 40 years and is a legend here for his commitment to quality care and increased access to healthcare services for all. He is incredibly well respected by everyone he works with and cares for. I am honored to work alongside him and be part of this event again today. Today, I have been asked to tell you a little bit about Dr. Gonzalez and why we have named this very special award in his honor. Inspired by his childhood experiences in Puerto Rico, Ernesto has dedicated his life, not just to medicine, but to providing opportunities to those who may not otherwise have them. Dr. Gonzalez is an advocate for student mentorship, particularly underrepresented students. In 2000, he founded the first Hispanic medical students mentorship in the country, offering mentoring to Hispanic students attending the four Massachusetts medical schools. 
in 2002, Harvard Medical School awarded him the Harvard Medical School Mentorship Award. As former Associate Director of the Multicultural Affairs Office at Massachusetts General Hospital, Dr. Gonzalez was instrumental in the development of several training programs that advocate for underrepresented students, such as the Summer Research Training Program, as well as an intense and comprehensive recruitment program for physicians applying for residency. The office also established a minority faculty development fellowship for residents and fellows designed to assist in the retention of underrepresented physicians. Outside of his work at MGH and Harvard Medical School, where he is a professor of medicine, Dr. Gonzalez is recognized as a true humanitarian. He has received awards from numerous community organizations for his work with the Boston Homeless Health Care System and established in-kind telemedicine services for underserved communities in Honduras and his homeland of Puerto Rico through private funding sources. In 2005, he was the first recipient of this award, which was later renamed in his honor. Since that first award, 29 MGHers have joined Dr. Gonzalez on the list of past recipients, which is hung year round on our employee recognition wall outside the general store. Today, we will add one more name to this honor roll. I would like to take a moment and acknowledge all seven of this year's award nominees. We are proud of you and the wonderful work that you do for Mass General and the Latino community. Congratulations to all of you. Before we hear from Dr. Gonzalez and introduce our 2022 award winner, let's enjoy some more music from Veronica Robles. continue to be, uh, and to be with uh, you know, the next generation. And now I'm going to sing a song. Voy a cantar una canción para todos ustedes. Feliz de estar aquí eh, compartiendo una vez más este, este award para toda esta comunidad maravillosa y todos los aportes que ha dado Ernesto González. Y esta es una canción original que dice que la vida no vale nada, pero sí vale la vida. Hay que encontrarle el motivo de su servidora, Verónica Robles, y dice... Vida plena, hoy porque esta vida. 
to introduce the namesake of this award, Dr. Ernesto Gonzalez, who will say a few words and introduce us to this year's winner. Dr. Gonzalez. Thank you, Jovita. Good morning and welcome to our virtual audiences to the Ernesto Gonzalez Award Ceremony. I would like to acknowledge the previous speakers, Dr. David Brown, President of the MGH, Margarita Alegria, Director of this Disparities Research Unit, and Jovita Thomas Williams, Senior Vice President of Human Resources. Furthermore, I would like to thank Sandra Ordonez Peña for her welcoming remarks in representation of the Committee on Hispanic Initiatives. Your deep commitment and efforts to enrich and sustain this celebration is much appreciated. As the first incumbent of this award back in 2005, I have taken the prerogative, in addition to presenting this award to the 2022nd deserving winner, to use it as a pulpit to recognize other important honors bestowed this year. Accomplishments need to be recognized and the news amplified to ensure that the information reaches large audiences. While I'll indulge in this preamble, I am cognizant of time constraints of my presentation and the priority of the task at hand for today. Firstly, Dr. Joseph Betancourt has been named the first incumbent of the Sumner M. Redstone Endowed Chair in Health Equality. This is a well-deserved recognition for his tireless work to ensure that all underserved communities receive the respect and benefits of weak equal care for all. Mr. Redstone was a billionaire philanthropist, benefactor of the MGA charity, and a prominent figure as the CEO of Viacom, a movies and communications emporium based in Hollywood. Congratulations to Joe as he continues his laudable efforts of community service and his vertiginous rise in the MGH governance. Similarly, Carmen Vega Barakovic has received an endowed fund from the trustees as a scholar in speech, language, and swallowing disorders. Carmen has been a champion of many deeds with her dedication to people in need at the MGH and beyond. She is highly recognized and respected in our Hispanic community for her multitasking and spiritual convictions. Congratulations to Carmen for such a recognition and support. Lastly, I would like to announce the creation of a position of ambassadorship for the homeless to be supported by an endowment of my name from many of the benefactors. The Office of Development of the MGH has agreed to use this fund originally targeted to create a chair in my name to be allocated to expand and amplify the concept of homelessness as an important and essential element of the human infrastructure that requires national attention. This position of creativity and advocacy will organize best practices of homeless programs through the nation to establish a national paradigm 
to eventually su be supported by the federal government. As in previous years, the selection among these seven candidates was intense as the members of the selection committee review the impressive qualifications of each individual. Many of the performances were transcendental during the ravaging pandemic disaster, and we should be reassured to know that the goodwill and strength of the spirit of all nominees was palpable. Congratulations to all nominees. The winner of this year was endorsed by several letters from her colleagues and peers. She is described, and I quote, as the kindest, most compassionate, most dedicated physician. She's also described as an epitome of compassion, advocacy, and leadership, also as a source of inspiration for her patients. She's recognized nationally and internationally for her quest to help the Hispanic community among people in need in her country of Peru, as well as other Latin American countries and in the Boston community. Her roles as a communicator, translator, provider, and healer were magnified during the recent epidemic, where she displayed in earnest her social responsibility and personal attributes of humanity. I had become acquainted with this year's winner when she worked as a fellow with the late Dr. Paul Farmer in countries ravaged by the white plague, tuberculosis, and the management of resistant variants. I followed her work and commitment since then and concur that she is an outstanding physician with a humane soul and deserves this recognition. Congratulations to the nearest recipient of the Ernesto Gonzalez Award. She is a physician in the Department of Medicine and distinguished member of the Infectious Disease Unit of the MGH. Dr. Rocio Hurtado is the winner. Rocio, you are indeed an inspiration to all of us. It is my pleasure to present you with this award. Thank you, Dr. Gonzalez. Thank you to um, the Office of Multicultural Affairs, to the Mass General. A warm thanks. I have been a, a deep admirer of Dr. Gonzalez. I actually met him in 1995 when I was interviewing to uh, join the internal medicine residency and um, have admired him ever since. We've even shared patience over the years. His example, his warmth is a true embodiment of a healer and he transcends the medical model. He treats people as human beings, regardless of our circumstances and our walks of life. Thank you, Dr. Gonzalez, for being that example to so many in the Latino community. I uh, have several people I would like to thank. Uh, first and foremost, my uh, family from Lima, Peru, uh, my parents, Pedro and Julio Hurtado, and my two sisters, Iri Sofia and Ana Lucia, if it weren't for my parents, uh, when I was 19, I would never even have considered uh, a career in medicine. And I am deeply grateful for uh, all the sacrifices they have made. My three, uh, my grandparents, three of them in heaven, and I still am incredibly fortunate to have a 104 year old abuelito, a former Peruvian shepherd in the highlands of my country, an example of diligence and perseverance. To my husband, David, whose dry British sense of humor has kept me afloat. Uh, and uh, despite our different cultural backgrounds, he has uh, um, always been appreciative of uh, the world I have come from and who's been tireless in running our family. And his sacrifice has allowed uh, and made it possible for me to be a mother while still being a physician. To the light of my life, my two beautiful twins, Mercedes and Theo, and to Tia Jean and Tio Don, who made our family a reality. I would also like to thank uh, my dear friend, Francisco Marti, a true Latin physician hero, uh, also an infectious disease physician who died a year ago and early in the COVID pandemic saved the lives of so many, including in our Latino community by making the antiviral remdesivir available in those dark days of COVID when there was no treatment available otherwise. 
I would like to thank my mentors, Dr. Baskos, Dr. Ryan, Dr. Calderwood at this hospital, Dr. Ann Goldfeld, Dr. Paul Farmer, uh, who was the inspiration for me to become a TB doctor many years ago. Um, they taught me about medicine, about what is possible, even when resources are scarce, and uh, to always keep the will and the sense of mission alive. A deep, deep thanks to my fellows, my trainees, many of them now colleagues, uh, my nursing team, my administrative team. Uh, I will say that uh, fellows and um, residents are what, uh, you know, what the, the, the spirit of, of this hospital, and I'm incredibly grateful to have worked with many generations. Last but not least, to my patients for sharing their stories, their fears, for providing their trust in us, for their incredible resilience in times of tremendous, tremendous illness and loss. There is no greater privilege, truly, than to be part of this noble profession. And for that, and for all of you, I am deeply grateful. I would like to close with, close with two quotes. Um, one by Isabel Allende, a Chilean uh, writer. Uh, in Spanish, al final, solo se tiene lo que se ha dado. In the end, you only truly have what you give. So give freely and abundantly to one another. And to uh, another quote, and this is my last, um, from Archbishop Desmond Tutu. In God's family, there are no outsiders. Thank you very much for this honor. Thank you, Dr. Gonzalez, for being the example that you are. Thank you all. Felicidades, Rocío, por ese maravilloso reconocimiento. Gracias por haberme tenido aquí con esto para Puerto Rico y el mundo. En mi viejo San Juan, cuántos sueños forjé en mis noches de infancia. Mi primera ilusión y mis cuitas de amor son recuerdos del alma. Una tarde me fui a mi extraña nación, pues lo quiso el destino. Pero mi corazón se quedó frente al mar en mi viejo San Juan. Adiós, 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 por Inquen, querida tierra de mi amor. Adiós, 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 mi diosa del mar, mi reina del palmar. Me voy, pero un día volveré a buscar mi querer, a soñar otra vez en mi viejo San Juan. Gracias a todos aquellos cuidadores de vida por darnos la oportunidad de volver a vivir y sobrevivir. Pero el tiempo pasó y el destino borró mi terrible nostalgia. Y no pude volver al San Juan que yo amé, pedacito de patria. Mi cabello blanqueó y mi vida se va, hoy la muerte me llama. Quiero morir alejada de ti, Puerto Rico del alma. Adiós, 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 Orinque y querida tierra de mi amor. Adiós, 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 mi diosa del mar, mi reina del palmar. Voy, pero el día volveré a buscar mi querer, a soñar otra vez en mi viejo San Juan. Oh.
a buscar mi querer, a soñar otra vez en mi viejo San Juan. Ahora felicitemos a la doctora Rocío Hurtado y a todos los nominados de este año. También le damos un reconocimiento inmenso a Verónica Robles por su espléndida música. Un agradecimiento especial para los doctores Brown, Alegría, Jovita Williams y el doctor Ernesto González. Gracias por su participación y, y las y inspiradoras palabras. Y también a todos los que trabajaron en la producción de este evento. Sin ellos, este evento no sería posible. Now, Let's congratulate the winner, Dr. Rocio Hurtado, and all the nominees this year. We also give a huge shout out to Veronica Robles for her splendid music. Special thanks to Drs. Brown, Alegria, Jovita Williams, and Dr. Ernesto Gonzalez for their participation and inspiring words. And to all those who work in the production of this event, it will not be possible without them. Antes de despedirme, les invito a seguir participando en los demás eventos organizados en MGA este año. Gracias por acompañarnos hoy en esta celebración. Les deseo un maravilloso día. Disfruten la vida y hasta la próxima. Before I leave, I invite you to continue participating in the other events organized at MGA this year. Thank you for joining us in this celebration. I wish you a wonderful day, enjoy life, and until the next time, thank you.